Well, hello everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. Today, let's look at the McFarlane Toys Batman Classic TV Series Batcave playset. I walked into Walmart a few days ago and found this just sitting underneath a fresh refill of Batmobiles and what I can only assume would have been figures as well that were just sold out by the time I got there. And I was like, I can't pass up buying the Batcave. McFarlane is just killing it with his design team with all of this fantastic box art. Although I will say just like with the back of the action figure packaging, this is not the actual action figure we got. For the back of the box, we see again the Batman Classic TV Series logo, McFarlane Toys. Apparently this bad boy's 24 inches and they're really proud of that. Boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. Just look at all those bat computery parts. Right, let's open it up then. A will a cut cut here, and a slice slice there. Here a yoink, there a yoink, everywhere a yoink, yoink. Oh boy, oh, oh geez. Oh, there's another piece on the inside. It's the fried egg. Alrighty. Maybe uh, I should put this stuff together. Oh, there was something inside that one. Another piece of the back. Oh, there's another one inside that one. They're like Russian dolls. That means this one will be like that too. There'll be a whole bunch of little bat computers on the inside. What is that, six total? Oh, we got these yellow bits here that have been taped in. More back computer stuff. Oh, haha! <laughs> this one had a little baby. All right, it's been taped together. Open it up and oh, it, oh. Wow, this is a construction zone. Wait a minute. That doesn't look right. Hold on a second. <laughs> there. <laughs> I think I had it upside down. Oh, that's a sticker. I tell you one thing I wasn't expecting. For some reason, I thought that all these yellow bits on the reactor were molded to it. They're not, they're stickers. Oh, there's another little baggie of fun too. Let's open that. And you can. All right, now I would say, where are the instructions to put it together? Oh crap. Okay, I'm gonna put this together and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I think I put it together more or less according to the imagery on the box. Although we need to look at these back computery things. Oh, it's upside down. <laughs> we have to look at these things first before we can look at the stuff in the back. Because if I place these where they're supposed to go, then they'll be they'll be out of frame, as you can see. So let's look at all these pieces first. First you have their US and Canada followed by their international crime photo files. Then we have the actual bat computer. Well just look at all those bat computery knobs and buttons and light up things. Then we have another bat computer that is on a desk with drawers. You can see the little keyboard there in the front with more blippity bloop lights. And here is the world's first GPS system, the navigational aid that I'm guessing communicates with the back computer, which also comes complete with a keyboard and more blippity bloopy buttons and lights. Of course, there's the round circle that you're supposed to park the Batmobile on. Another back computer of sorts. I'm not really sure what a lot of these things do. I can't remember, and I don't want to watch every episode to try and figure it out. We have what appears to be some sort of readout device of some kind. Here is the memory bank. You have a, what looks like a graphic equalizer on there, a whole bunch of knobs and buttons, and then a reel-to-reel -reel tape deck. And of course, it's labeled memory bank. And then we have two of these bad boys, and they must be important because they're wearing little golden spirally party hats. And then we have these here. This to me looks like some kind of a radar device, more back computery stuff, and they have a, a garbage can on top of that. Honestly, I'm not really sure. I can't remember. As a kid, I didn't pay attention to what all this stuff was. We just take it for granted that it's back computery stuff. And then we have the atomic reactor here, the super high, high voltage, keep off atomic pile skull and crossbones power to the bat cave. As I said, this is just a sticker. For some reason, I thought that this was gonna be sculpted in, although these little circles right here, they are sculpted and painted. And over here, actually, we have two of these. We have the bat poles, and they just clip onto the corner here over the side, and they just, they just hang there, just like that. 
I think overall, this is a very cool looking playset, and as a child, I certainly wish that I could have had something like this myself. Now, whether or not this is for a child or for an adult collector, it is kind of nice that these sides can fold right in on themselves. I do kind of wish there was some place to store all these bat computer -y parts. I'm sure you could stuff some of them in here, but I feel like some of these, if a kid owns them, would definitely go missing. I certainly do have to give these guys points over at McFarland Toys for including so many different pieces to this. Now let's check the scale of this. First, let's pull the Batmobile up because it has been said amongst the collector community that this thing might be a tad small. I feel like this is okay for the Batmobile. Hold on, let's get a better view of it. See, I feel like this is actually okay for the Batmobile. I don't feel like it's too terribly out of scale. However, since we know that the Batmobile is kind of out of scale with the figures, does that mean that the Batcave playset will also be out of scale for the figures? Let's find out. Now, looking at these two standing in front of the playset, it's clear that it's definitely a little bit too small, too out of scale for this Batman and Robin. But remember, this was actually primarily made for kids. Collectors, yes, Todd knows collectors are going to buy this, but it's sold in the toy aisle, and the hopes are that kids are going to buy this. Although I will say I don't know how many 12 and up people are going to be buying this to play with it. I don't know very many 12 and up kids that play with toys. And I use Robin just because, because he's the smaller of the two. Robin next to the filing cabinet looks a bit large. Next to the back computer, also a bit large. Really just next to any of this stuff. And standing them up here, up top, if you remember actually how big this thing is supposed to be just by watching the old school Batman movie, yeah, it, it's definitely not quite in scale. But I'm not going to hold that against Todd, just based on the simple fact that it would be pretty challenging to make a playset that is truly in six inch scale for these figures. It would have to be like, like yay big. It would have to be really, really huge. So I'm not really knocking Todd for it. I just, I have to point this out in case you as the consumer get this home and go, this is not the right scale. And then, you know, you're upset with your purchase and then you take it out back and set it on fire. It's my job to let you know what you may or may not be getting into if you purchase this. I will say this though, when you put the Superpowers Collection Batman and Robin here, it actually seems like it's definitely more in scale with Superpowers figures. Which means you could display this right alongside your Superpowers Hall of Justice playset. Also someone had asked me, will the Batmobile actually fit? the Kenner Superpowers Collection Batman and Robin better than the McFarlane toys? And the answer to that is yes. They both fit perfectly in this Batmobile. This Batmobile is actually a Superpowers scale Batmobile, not so much a McFarlane toys Adam West Batman figure scale Batmobile. So honestly now, what do I think about the McFarlane Toys Batman classic TV show Batcave playset? Do I feel like it's a worthwhile purchase for you yourself as an adult collector or perhaps for a small child? Yes, I, I really do actually think that this is a fantastic playset. If you're a hound for scale, you may want to use this for your superpowers collection. If it's for a kid, I really don't think that the kids are going to care that much. And I pretty much paid 40 bucks Canadian for this, which all things considered, I think is a pretty reasonable price for this. So if you can find this out in the wild when you're on the hunt and you're hemming and hawing, I like it. I give it my seal of approval, but, but in the end, you're going to have to make that decision yourself by having a close look at it as much as you can in the store. But I certainly know that I'm satisfied with it, and I'm definitely going to make a nice display with this. Anyhow, super friends, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and I will see you with the next one. Have a DC day, everybody, and take care.